The Bible is full of people distorting time. You have people stopping the sun so they can have a battle. You have John and Ezekiel and others traveling through time. You have Moses going back to the beginning. You have Enoch seeing through the ages. You have Isaiah seeing through the ages. And you, 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 whoa, 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 wow. I didn't realize that time was a flexible substance because we're used to looking at the minutes on our, our clocks and we're used to being under time. But how many of you guys know that when you're under time, <laughs> it's all toil? For I've looked at everything that's done under the sun. The Bible says the sun is a power, but we sit high above every power. Now we've positioned ourselves under times and seasons rather than governing times and seasons because Jesus is not under times and seasons. It says he changes times and seasons. We're not meant to be like everyone else on the planet because we're not from here. We're born from above, born from Zion, and earth is a lower time reference than where we come from. So it's not going to get any easier tonight. Let's put the slides on. I'll just start talking. So we're going to talk about space time, right? This is what the Bible says. The Bible such an amazing book. It says, see then you walk not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Did you hear that? The days are actually evil. They've collapsed out of Eden's time. Now, Eden meant pleasure, rest, delight. Now, in Eden, there was no sweat, no toil. When the fall happened, time changed and we became prisoners of time. But in Jesus, we're a new creation, so we're not from this time. Did you hear that? In Jesus, you are not from this time. You're a kainos being. That's the word for new creation, which means new in form or quality, not archaic. Everything around us is not the creation you're from. This is the archaic creation. Your origin isn't in Adam. Jesus came as a brand new Adam, the second Adam, as the firstborn of many. Jesus begins a new genetic frame of reference, a new creation. <laughs> so we can redeem the time because the days are evil. Now let me tell you this. When I first started teaching on time, it was so controversial. I said to the Lord, I'm never going to teach on time again. And then the Lord reminded me that the Antichrist spirit changes times and seasons. And the Lord rebuked me and he says, if you don't change it, someone else will. While we don't occupy, someone else will occupy. Either you're in charge of time or time's running you. But there's no middle ground. But God wants us to come back to rich time. How many of you guys would like more time than you need to do your jobs? We start to have time miracles. I call it rich time because I couldn't think of a word for it. But, you know, I started to notice this thing. You know, Ian talked about it years ago that Ian used to start to do a whole day's work in an hour, didn't you? That something happened from ascending into heaven. Something happens when you ascend because you go through time. You know the time isn't the same in heaven, right? So you, the more you ascend, the more you break the hold of time on your life. So he'd been ascending to heaven and he was able to do a whole day's work in an hour. And as I start to engage this concept, I was in the spirit. I hadn't expected that the Lord would teach me about time because I was trying to go to heaven. But the thing is, when you go to heaven, you move through time. Because what time is it in heaven right now? There's no sun and moon. There's no watch on your hand. So what time is it there? And it all depends on which heaven you go to. Because remember, it's heavenly places. So each place is on a different time. I was challenged by Roland Buck. You guys know Roland Buck, right? 
the guy that walked with angels, that he went into heaven and he said it's, he thought he was there for seven months, six, seven months. And during that time, he had 2,000 scriptures burnt into his head. He had 120 prophecies about world events. He had all these incredible revelations of the library room, of the documentation, the scroll room. He saw the throne room, and he thought he'd gone from his family for seven months. Suddenly, he's coming back out of heaven, back into his body. He looks at the back of his head and thinks, wow, my hair's going really white. And then he gets back in his body, and all that had passed was five minutes. In the time that you can have a cup of coffee is enough time to go roaming around the cosmos with Jesus. Years ago, I was with some Hebraic people, some people that that study the Hebraic and all this, and I was talking to this guy. I said, have you thought about Enoch? And he said, "I, I try to be like Enoch. However, I've got a family. I haven't got enough time, I realized, and slapped me on the back as if he'd given me good advice. The reality is that means he's a prisoner of time that time is actually governing him. Enoch learned that you could go beyond time. Enoch was the first human being after Adam to have a panoramic vision of the cosmos, but he was able to go into the cosmos. In an old era, even before the cross, he saw a new creation because the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. And he went out of the matrix of space-time See, all this conference, we've been talking about teleportation. You can't talk about teleportation without talking about time because when you move through space, you move through time because they're a grid that you're in. Let me explain that. Right now, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning for my wife, right? If I move in space to where she is, I've moved through time. But not only does time... Is time different there because they're on the other side of the the sun? If you move out from Earth into the moon, the gravity is different, so time moves at a different speed on the moon than on Earth. We think that every planet moves at the same time. It doesn't. If you begin to move in the kingdom realm of the Father, you have to get rid of the concept of time as you know it. You have to realize that time is a substance that you can master. Listen, there is no future for humanity unless we govern time. If we don't govern time, we can't leave earth. Because if you're under the sun and under the moon and that frames up your existence, how will you exist out there? What year will you be in? You know, we think it's the year 2016. (laughs) We frame up our days after God's, Thor's day, Saturn's day. And then systems of government that can't define us anymore because you have died to that system. In Jesus, you died to that world. One translation says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. He's in a brand new world. See, you can be in the earth, but you shouldn't be in the world. See, I'm, I'm walking around, but I can be in a different world on earth. Where's that in the Bible? There's so many examples. I'll give you one. Ezekiel did it regularly. Ezekiel was taken out of his body, and then he was transported through space, but also time to the Valley of Dry Bones. So which time was he in? Theologians think it could mean three different times. So was he in three or four times at the same time? Yes. Because this is the mystery of the gospel. That he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Now we think of God being everywhere, don't we? If you're joined to him, your spirit has become one with him. You're like a cup that was poured into the ocean of his spirit. Now, where are you? But this is the thing. God's not everywhere alone. He is every time. (laughs) 
You cannot comprehend yourself until you look at the blueprint, which is Jesus Christ, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. It says that we were co uh, crucified with him, co-buried with him, co-raised. And there's another thing that I've not been teaching on, but I'm going to start to teach on, where it says in Ephesians that he went above the heavens of heavens so he could fill everything and be everywhere. You guys okay? <laughs> Therefore, behold, all the old is gone. The old thing's gone. That means archaic. The old order's gone. You're now from the future. Now, if you're a new creation, what does the future look like? Because you're from this. You should start behaving from the place you've come from. So if the new creation came in this room, what would it be like? Would we be looking at the old calendar? Okay. So the Lord said to me, I want you to master time. And I thought, Lord, what does that mean? And this is what the Lord revealed. He said, I want to give you skill, understanding like a master painter, wisdom of maturity to make a thing a beauty, to have a partnership with time and use the materials as they should be used. Isn't that a cool thing for the Lord to say? Yes. That we use the materials, that time was never meant to be a prison. We, we should always have all the time we need. Yes. Where did I first start learning this? It was in heaven because I found out we always had enough time. Yes. So there was people that were talking and others going to a meeting, but they'd all be there at the right time. How does that work? Because time can stretch or contract depending on how much of it you want. It's a fabric. This is a good word for you because if you start, I'm going to activate this in you tonight, but if you start praying for rich time, you see the time miracles that happen. How many of you are fed up of it taking an hour and a half to drive somewhere or two hours to drive somewhere? How many of you are fed up where you have a day where you accomplish nothing? How would you like to spend an hour doing what took you a whole day? How would you like to do in a day what took you a whole week? How would you like to just have a flow where creation responds to you? Whoa. Or how about having time back that you wasted? So this is what happened as the Lord started teaching me about this. When I was in the gym, I would just be exercising and he taught me. And in the gym, they've got a stairwell, a big stairwell where you go downstairs into the gym. The Lord taught me about it and I went away for two weeks. When I came back, they put a big poster up the stairwell. And the poster was of a face of a woman from the future. And it said, we think it's about time. It's time to take back what belongs to you. The revolution of me. That's how real this stuff is. It starts to shape reality that even the gym, somehow, someone decided that was what they were going to put on the wall that I had to walk past in the place where God taught me about time. It's very difficult to ignore Jesus when he does that. So we start to have crazy time distortions. I was going to do a two-hour job. We'd been away with our uh, cars and both were covered in mud. I was going to just spend the afternoon cleaning them inside and out, you know, polishing them. I thought, I'm just going to enjoy the Lord's presence. Enjoying him activates Eden. So I sat in that seat of rest where I'm not frustrated, where I'm going to enjoy cleaning the car. I'm going to be with him, enjoying it. I began to do it and I, I finished it and I went in the house and Rachel said, you can't have cleaned the car. And I, I said, what do you mean? She said, you've just gone out there. And I'd done it all in a quarter of the time that it should have taste, taken. But this is the amazing thing. I had used up no energy. My body felt no fatigue. It felt no tiredness. And I discovered there's this energetic system called Eden's time. That Adam was planted into Eden and we were meant to make Eden on the earth. Which means we're meant to subdue earth with Eden's time that you in your office, in your coffee shop, in your church, in your house, you bring a realm called Eden, which is pleasure and rest. Yes. That the days of toiling have to end. The days of human effort, we have to come back to the garden of his pleasure. That's what Eden means. Wow! 
Woo, wow, wee. The garden, the garden of his pleasure. Adam was planted into the garden of his pleasure. And listen, that was a trans-dimensional realm because it says there was a God, there was a place called Eden in heaven. Look at scripture. It says Satan used to walk on the fire stone, so it was in another dimension. It says in Ezekiel that you walked in Eden on the fire stone. So Eden's in heaven. Then there was a place called the garden, which was a trans-dimensional interface between the seen and unseen. He was put in there, and it says the river, one river, went into the garden eastward in Eden. Now that river then split into four and went into the earth, and the Lord said, I want you to take the garden of pleasure and spread it into earth. But he was always meant to be able to access dimensions. He was a dimension shift in being. So let's go on to the next slide. You guys with me? DNA is a gateway technology. You see it as biological, but it's actually spiritual technology. You see the lower end of it manifest as biology. What you're actually seeing is the visible 5% of DNA. The rest is hyperdimensional technology. Or to put it as the Bible says, lift up your head, O ye gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. So you are gates and doors. That's why we don't need gates and doors like angels. Because we're built in the pattern of Jesus. And when you go to union with him, you become the door. So the pattern of a human being is Jacob's ladder. Because Jesus said, I am Jacob's ladder. But Jesus reminds you of who you are. In a mirror, we see ourselves, the real us. So Jesus comes and reveals that we are dimension shifting portal technology. Listen, you can only govern what you can access. We're we're co-heirs of all things, which means you have to access all things. Because how can you govern something you can't access? Or to put it as the psalmist says, if I go into the stars, you are there. Sounds like someone who did a bit of travel. If I go to the depths of the sea, you are there. If I go into hell, you are there. We are... This is a strange thing. I'm going to try and explain it. This stuff's been revealed by the Spirit... I can't teach you it. The Holy Spirit will have to teach you this, okay? But this is what I'm going to tell you, is that you've been entangled through the whole cosmos. What I mean by that is your strand of life, your DNA, the Jacob's ladder that you are, is spiraling through every dimension that exists. That's why Satan wants you. That's why other beings want you. That's why everything gravitates around you. That's why Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Whoa. Whoa. So I've started to see like this weirdy, and you maybe have seen this, but it's like our bodies are a strand that go through all these layers. We're seeing just the lower part of it. Let's go to the next slide. So DNA is a spiral. You see it replicated in our architecture because we know that there's this shape, there's a rhythm, there's an understanding to this. This come from another world. It's an ascension into dimensions. Your body is an ascension technology. That's why it gets resurrected. Because you're going to need it. That's why the cloud of witnesses are more limited than you. Unless they've got their bodies. That's why Moses had his body back. So, Because God wanted him to appear on the Mount of Transfiguration. Because he didn't want him to miss out on the fun. Because they were friends. I looked at that for a whole year until the Lord showed me. He said, you know, Moses had to die. But God loved him so much. It was like what you do with your kids. You take, you take a lolly off them sometimes. Because they're naughty. But they look so cute. You go, oh, you can have it back. That's what happened with Moses. You're going to die, Moses. It's like, okay. Satan knew this was going to happen. So the book of Jude says that Satan thought, I'm going to stop God giving him his body back. I'm going to take his body. So it says an angel had to rebuke Satan so that Moses could have his body back. That means your body must be worth something. Why did Jesus come back for his body? He could have just made a new one. 
Why did Elijah keep his body? So he can access it all still. Why did God resurrect people at the cross? It says the saints were resurrected and came out of their tombs. Why give them a resurrection early? So they can be in on the fun. I'll tell you one of them it, who one of them was. This is something I've seen. One of them was Joseph. Because when Joseph died, he said, take my bones with you. He saw that they would go out of exile. He says, 400 years time, take my bones with you. And in Hebrews, it says that was an act of faith. Why was it an act of faith? Because he'd seen the, the, first, he, the first resurrection. So he was buried 30 miles outside of Jerusalem. And he was one of those guys that reappeared and went into the city. Why is that? So he can be in on what's going on now and he can access the earth realm now and saints can walk amongst us now. Enoch can walk amongst us now. They're appearing now. Let's go on to the next slide. I hope you're getting the idea. <laughs> it's a picture of what you are. We're not trying to be something. We already are something. We've got to start to get with the program that we are in charge of all of the layers of creation, co-heirs of all things. We better start acting like we're co-heirs of all things. Next slide. I can't remember what's on some of these. So we were always meant to be able to hold entire planets in our heart. This was what Adam looked like in the spirit, like this girl, boy, girl, I think, holding earth. Where would people have gone if we'd all not died? We could have gone back up into the heavenlies. So this is earth. We're changing earth. We could have gone back into here. And who knows what's in there? I mean, Eden's the lowest level. And then we were supposed to go out into the stars. So let's go on to the next one. Why are we obsessed with Star Trek? Why are we obsessed with Star Wars? Why are we spending loads of money to get off the planet? Because God put deep down inside you the answer to creation. And every star right now is sending a frequency to earth which they can measure, which is a sound, which is calling you to come. Because all of creation, all of it is groaning. That means 13.8 billion light years away, they're groaning and interested in you. Let's keep going. So this is a project that NASA has proposed. It's called the 1,000 Year Project. They've got a strategy which they want to implement at some point, maybe in the next century, where they try and change Mars back to a breathable planet. Because the evidence suggests that it was a breathable planet. This gypsum on it, which comes from salty seas, it's got all the evidence of an oxygenated atmosphere. We know something happened. Chaos has come into Mars. Mars is groaning for the revelation of the sons of God, not for NASA, yeah. but for sons that move in the kingdom realm of the Father now. And I could tell you some stories about space, but I'm going to just concentrate on time a minute. Let's do one thing at a time. <laughs> So listen, there are so many planets out there now that we're discovering are habitable. We thought maybe Earth was the only place. This is from SETI, the Institute of Research for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. They say this, the number of habitable worlds in our galaxy is certainly in the tens of billions minimum. And we haven't even talked about the moons. You know, moons can be habitable too. And the number of galaxies we can see other than our own is about 100 billion. So 100 billion times 10 billion is 1,000 billion billion habitable planets in the visible universe. So what are you going to do about it? I mean, listen, Jesus came along in John 3, and he talked about frequency, being born from above, moving through dimensions, and 
He couldn't handle it. Nicodemus couldn't handle it. And Jesus went, oh, I wanted to talk to you about heavenly things. The church is still trying to get over the fact that we're we're made from above, that we're a frequency, a vibration, that we're energetic. We come from somewhere else. But God wants to still talk about heavenly things. Let me tell you this. I didn't know this until I started going into heaven. But God considers the cosmos heavenly. Where's that in the Bible? It says, Abraham, look at the stars in the heavens. Look up at the sun and moon. Consider the heavens. So according to the Bible, God wants to talk to you about the cosmos as well as the upper heavens. Or are you going to wait till you die to find that out and make death your savior and the hero of your story? Or are we going to make death the one that qualifies us for knowledge? Because what the eye hooks into multiplies and that's why we've got death in the church because we've honored it. And power flows through honor. That's why people put their dead all around churches because it's the most natural place for them to be. (laughs) Let's keep going. So listen, this will really cook your noodle. (laughs) All of space, all of time exists in you. Just let it blow your brain. Just get over it. Listen, this is what scripture says. He has put eternity in your heart. Or also, he has put space in their heart. Of course we're going to be crazy. (laughs) Some people go to, you know, say they've been to heaven and they think it's such a big deal, but you haven't gone very far. You just went a tiny bit in. Because all the heaven's in you. That's why it says with John, I was in the spirit. I heard a voice and I just turned. Just turned. So we got to stop being under the sun. Because if we're under the sun, we're under radiation and death. Because written into light right now in its collapsed state is death. What do I mean by that? Is that light, the, the light in the sun and the cosmos in the fallen realm, if you live in it, carries the record of death. I'll put it another way. Einstein said, if you can move faster than light, you're immortal. Because death can't catch up with it. So we've been under the sun. Listen, when we're under the sun, we're under a lower level and everything becomes effort. It says this, I've seen all the works which you've done under the sun and behold, all is vanity and striving after the wind. Are you fed up of vanity and striving after the wind? I am in me. I'm fed up of living like a human. Paul said this, you know, any man being Christ is a new creation. But then he said, I can no longer, no longer look at you in a merely human fashion. We've got to stop looking at each other as, as humans that are saved. And as new creations that are in union with the divine. There's a big difference between a salvation message and a union message. up and listen a lot of the prophetic movement and I honor the prophetic movement but it's come under times and seasons that means it can only speak into the earth and the earth is quite small remember you're meant to have a function in heaven as well in heavenly places you're seated in heavenly places they don't care what month it is The moon. Listen, did you know that the the sun is actually harming us? They can measure arthritis on the earth based on the sun cycles. Every 11 years it goes through a cycle and it directly maps to arthritis levels. What about the moon? They found that the moon can affect your personality by its cycles. That's why we have lunatics. It comes from Luna. 
It comes from Luna. Because the, the, the waters and the gravity of the, the moon is affecting us in a way that we have to shift out from that. Because how many of you want the sun to, to give you sickness? How many of you want it? Because it says he himself will be a shade so the sun does not harm you and the moon doesn't harm you by night. So listen, if you're not in union with Jesus, the moon in its current condition can actually harm you. Next slide. What about the, the 12 houses? I studied psychology for five years, behavioral science, and they've actually found that the, the, the star signs do impact people's personalities. Do you want that to frame up who you are? Or do you want the blueprint of your design to frame up who you are? Because you're going to have to say, I can't be defined by Sagittarius or any of the other star signs that are out there. Because listen, when we've read those newspapers, we're saying that defines me. We've come under its government when we're meant to be the one that shapes the heavens, shapes the cosmos, shapes the stars. It's good to celebrate birthdays. But is that really where I came from? How old am I? See, we keep saying there's going to be a young people's movement. My Bible says you're ancient doors. There's not a young person in the room. Okay, you might say your body's young, but where's your body come from? It's got a lot of history in its DNA. You weren't the first person to own that technology. You've inherited epigenetics, which means this is how animals know flight plans, by the way, and skills, because there's actually data encoded in your body. That's why God wants to sanctify your body, soul, and spirit, which is what we call transfiguration, which is the fully manifest redeemed mind. Repentance is a sustained change of thinking about how reality functions. So Einstein said this, the distinction between past, present, and future is a stubbornly persistent illusion. <laughs> so we're going to get free from these things. Let's go on to the next slide. I'm not going to go on much longer. So this, why is it a stubbornly persistent illusion? I'll tell you. Because all the time already exists. It's a loaf of space-time. This is creation one. Or the present creation. But the Bible says, you're not from there. How did Moses see the beginning and write Genesis? He just went out and backwards. See, when you go in the spirit, you shift out of the cone and you could go anywhere in any time. John Paul Jackson, you guys know well, he went back to the time of David. He was actually in the Bible. He said a line, didn't he, that's written in the Bible. Okay, right. <laughs> Rub that off the tape. <laughs> John, okay, you want another example? John went into the future, right? Did he talk to people? So there's a time traveler gone to the future from the past, talking to people to find out what's going to happen so he can tell people in the past. That's what we call being prophetic. Time traveling. So, you're traveling in the spirit, but why aren't you traveling in time? Because if you could see the future, you'll be a part of the future. How do I know that? Because Moses and Elijah were on the mountain, because it says that they testified about Jesus' appearing. The law and prophets saw his day. Because they saw his day, they were allowed to be present in his day. Because what your eyes hook into multiplies. What you see, you possess. Which means everyone here has to start to see further through time. <sighs> this is just a part of it. There's so much more because all you're looking at there is the visible 5%. Do you know the rest of the universe is called dark energy and dark matter? It's in another hyper dimension that they can't measure. The same as the rest of your DNA. 
You only use 5% of your senses. Where are the 95% for? You only use 5% of your brain. What is the 95% for? You only see 5% of the cosmos. What is the other 95% for? This is just one plane of existence that God's calling you to engage with because you're co-heir of all things. And he's asking a generation to come up here and begin to see. Come up here and begin to see what must soon take place. Listen, the days are going where we need prophets because there's, I honor the prophetic and we need it hear me right but there's a day coming where the maturity is the order of Melchizedek where we sit in Jesus and we see in Jesus and we move in Jesus and we move in infinite knowledge or the mind of Christ this is the gospel union with God that as he is so are you in this world The way you think determines the world you see. That's why we need to change right now. We're going through the biggest repentance season the church has ever seen. We're going from repentance, from belief systems that nullified the power of the age to come. We're going through shifts in our thinking about time and space. Aging. Aging. Woo! Whoa! Whoa, doesn't it say he will quicken your mortal body? Someone's got to start to believe for the quickening of the mortal body. Someone's got to start to believe that we can keep this technology, that we cancel our death day. It says in Hebrews, by faith Enoch skipped death. One translation says he didn't even take a look at it. I'm nearly done. There's a limit to how much I can mess your head up in one night. Dunham, Dunham, Dun, 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 Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you left earth? Because my Bible says, lift up your eyes to the heavens first, then look upon the earth beneath. It says, you set your mind on things above. You choose to turn into it. So why are you always on earth? Because I can tell you now, leaving earth is like leaving a, a country that you've always lived in. When you go to another country, your perspective changes forever. You can never be the same. You may go back to your country, but you will never be the same. Listen, that's what it's like when you leave earth. It's funny, Bob Jones, I honor Bob Jones with all my heart. I so love that guy that he met an astronaut that had walked on the moon. He didn't know who this guy was. It was at a party. And Bob says, you've been on the moon. He's like, how do you know? I've been on the moon. <laughs> and he recognized the resonant frequency that you get from having been in that environment. Listen, you're already in Jesus and Jesus is everywhere. It's just a turning of your consciousness in union under his government of love to see his world because he wants you to spy out the land that you're possessing. He wants you to be one of the 10, the government of 10 that say, I'm going to go into that country and I'm going to spy it out. Hey, listen, let me tell you a mystery. We think they're all waiting in heaven for us to get there before they start doing stuff. Rick Joyner sold three million copies of his book, The Final Quest. And I think that was a great book. I love that book. And, but I think people read it through a lens. So I'm just going to read you something from my Beyond Human book. This is what Rick Joyner said. As I approached the judgment seat of Christ, those in the highest ranks were also sitting on thrones that were a part of his throne. Even the least of these thrones was more glorious than any earthly throne many times over. Some of these were rulers over the affairs of heaven. 
and others over the affairs of the physical creation, such as star systems and galaxies. I want you to think about that. Think about what I just said. That means if you went out there into space, you'll find some parts of it are already under the government of the saints. Terraformed. Okay, let me put it another way. If you're struggling with this, when earth's transformed, it still says to the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So where are we going to go? I'm going to wrap this up. So keep going through the slides. So if you were here, listen, if God could take Philip to Samaria, some area, <laughs> he can take you to some area. <laughs> can anyone here give me a verse that says God can't take you there in the spirit? Can anyone give me a verse that says that's not acceptable? So why don't we go more? Now, if you were there, what time would it be? How's your iPhone going to work there? What month would it be? What year would it be? So how are you going to keep track of time then? Where's the chronometer of creation? You should know this. This is important when you're going through space. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. You can figure that out for yourself. Let's go on. I want to wrap this up. I want to see some stuff. Listen, how many of you guys want to be about your father's business? Do you know the cosmos is your father's business? Cosmic. We've got a great future ahead of us. I don't want anyone here to be afraid. Do you know you're in? You're saved. You're a part of it. What I'm challenging tonight is how much of it can we see now? Because remember, it says we're meant to accelerate the times for Jesus. And I'm making you question the nature of your life because you don't have to live under the sun anymore. Yeah. Under the moon. You're more powerful than you ever imagined. Do you know there's no power source like you? Do you know you are hyperdimensional gateway technology? Stephen Hawking says this. Walking in this room right now are tiny things called wormholes. They've been formed and reformed by the billions right now. I'm walking through them. Do you know every one of those wormholes goes to a different time and space? And they think that the way that we're going to get to the stars in the future is by using energy to lock onto the wormhole and open it up so that we can go through the funnel to the other end. The thing that they need is power. I can think of a power source just now was coming to me. <laughs> I can think of something called the incomparably great power. Christ in you, the hope of glory that in you is a power source that can shift quantum realities. That is why you create that light responds to you. When you look at light, it goes from a wave to a particle by a human watching it. Oh, okay, last few slides. If we put a pinprick in the sky, a pinprick, how many galaxies do you think are in a pinprick? 
in the sky right now, that sky, if I put a pin in the sky, how many galaxies like the Milky Way do you think we can see, just see already in that one space? A pinprick. How many? 10,000. Hold a pin up one day and point it and say, I'll have it. Why don't you mark out your inheritance? Why don't you put a pin in the sky and say, I'll have that, Lord? Look how beautiful it all is. So light. You are children of light in a kingdom of light with an armor of light, but you are not the light of death. You are the light of life. You are life-giving spirits. You don't just have life, you're life-giving. Now listen, we've heard this first, that all the creation's waiting for the manifestation of the freedom of the sons of God, and we think when we have a free meeting that we're seeing sonship. Listen, the verse says, so that they can free creation from the record of death and decay. That means the freedom that we're coming into is that everything we touch comes alive. Everything we touch has no decay. Everything we touch becomes a living being built on the pattern of Eden again. It comes back to the blueprint, which means we've got to make a war on the spirit of death in this generation. We've got to break the covenant of death. Otherwise, we will never be sons fully manifest in creation, there has to be someone that gets crazy enough to break with a pattern of visible light. And I know someone that has. Enoch. Elijah. And they're appearing on the earth like no other generation's ever seen them before. Elijah is appearing to the prophets all over the earth and regular people. Enoch is appearing because there's something going on right now. There's something going on right now. There's something going on. Whoa. 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 When I leave here tomorrow, I'm going to spend three days staying in a house with a man who is seeing plants instantly grow around him. Tiny plants becoming big plants. Lights turning on when he just goes to reach towards them. Let's finish this. I can't remember what was on this. Yes, gateway technology. This is from one of the Marvel films, Thor. But I think God frames up stuff through anyone who has a heart that's open. Because it says he pours out his spirit on all flesh, not just Christians. So Hollywood is speaking right now that there's more to this creation and it's framing it up. Films like Interstellar are showing that we're meant to move through black holes. It's showing that we're meant to open up into these realms and transform them. This Marvel films are speaking. It's a booming voice that used to be whispering in the back of our minds, you can fly. He haunted our subconscious dreams and made us fly in our dreams until we would believe that we might see We need to bend space and time because it's not just a river running at one speed. It is a force that we're meant to shape and love and create with. And I'm done wasting time. I'm done killing time. I'm done done with wasting time. It's time to use it as a thing of beauty, as a thing of, of awesomeness. I'm done with just being stuck in one locality. It's time to live in him and move in him. And then we'll have a new being. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have a new being. Being. There's an order to this. We've got to start to live in union and then move in him. Like John on the Isle of Patmos, I was in the spirit. Then I moved and then he had a new state of being where he couldn't die. Whoa, let's finish. Come on, come on, next one. Shakarababasiki. So we are meant to hold time as a substance, as a thing of beauty. We're meant to create the future, not be victims of the future. We're meant to forge the future from the unseen because the blueprint for the future has already been written. 
All of my days were written in your books before any one of them came to be. The full blueprint for the future of this city is in the spirit. The full blueprint for your generations to come are in the spirit. Have you ever seen the books of destiny? It's got your entire family tree in it, past, present, and future. Okay, next slide. So time moves differently, and we've got to move differently through time. Did you know that time moves differently at the top of the Empire State Building than at the bottom? You have a longer day at the bottom than at the top? You can measure it because gravity pulls and stretches the day. We've got to break from the force of gravity being your government. That's what someone asked me the other day, why do people levitate? It's because Jesus levitated as the last act that he did because he was saying, gravity can't define me, space can't define me, the air can't define me, this dimension can't define me, and then he disappeared. That is not disconnected from you because that was still the image of who you are. That wasn't just a, a, a really cool way to leave. Okay, I think we're nearly there. This is someone's vision, image. This is a blueprint someone's had for Paris and said, can we create a future like this? An eco-friendly, happy city. Because if you can see the future, you can shape the future. It's time for God to release imagineers and dreamers and co-creators where you begin to co-create the destiny of nations and cities. And you begin to be the, the, the master worker with wisdom, frolicking and playing with wisdom, creating Eden upon the earth, creating a sustainable, environmentally clean future where there's no radiation and pollution, where, where there's endless energy. I think it's a bad idea America having all the resources and Africa not having enough lighting. I think it's a bad idea that in Britain we have washrooms and millions of people in India don't have washrooms. This is going to get earth. Don't ever think that going into heaven will disconnect you. It will change you so you get the blueprint, you get wisdom, you get understanding, you get strategy, you get an energized and enabled. Whoa. 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 Last slide. This is our future, a joy future, where we're going to be carriers of joy into all of creation. And that begins now. That begins with you having a happy home, a happy garden, a happy teleportation, a happy woohoo ascension into heaven. Now is the day of salvation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's not far away. It's in you. It's around you. It's through you. God is looking for believing believers, believing believers, believing believers. Whoa, and I dare to say that we are the generation that are going to believe it all. We are going to believe it all. We are going to believe it all. Yes, it's begun, it's begun, it's begun.